Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're doing really well. Now today is going to be a first for me because I am going to be doing a product review on these Soundpeats Run Free Light Open Ear Headphones. Now these were sent to me by Soundpeats and I want to say straight off the bat that I am not being paid for this review, but they did send these to me for free to do a review on them. However, I did tell them that any review I do would be completely honest and unbiased and they were totally okay with that. So that's a good start. So I'll get straight into it. And the first thing I want to mention, and I think it's the most important thing, quite honestly, is the price of these things. Now, these are currently selling on the Amazon UK website for 26 quid or on the Amazon US site for around $30. However, Soundpeats have actually sent me uh, some discount codes for both the UK and US Amazon sites, which I'll put in the description below. But even better than that, on the US site, I've just checked, they have one of those 20% off at checkout if you tick here boxes. So if you're buying them in America, they're or even cheaper. Basically what I'm saying is that Soundpeats are almost paying you to get these things, uh, which is great because while I've used them for the last week or so, uh, having to play around with them, I've not had the time to fully stress test them. So I don't know what they're going to be like long term, uh, but I'll give you my initial thoughts now. And to be honest, they're pretty positive because at this price point, you can't really go wrong. So in the box, you get the headphones themselves and they feel really light, like literally they weigh nothing. Uh, 28 grams, apparently. Uh, so they're good even for you weight weenies out there. Although personally, if you're that bothered about weight, um, I'd probably just have one spoonful less of porridge in the morning, but hey, that's me. But yeah, they feel nice and light. Uh, and also in the box, you get the USB-C uh, charging cable, short little charging cable there. Now, my first impression of these are that they actually feel quite flimsy. And as you can see, you can bend them up uh, quite a little bit and flex them. However, I found that to be a bit of a benefit because you may not know this, but I actually have a massive Swede of a head and I really struggle to find uh, helmets and glasses that fit properly without pinching too much, uh, either on the sides or on the, the main part of my cranium. So actually these being able to flex a bit wider, they actually felt really comfortable. So I'm gonna take that as a win. Now, only time will tell uh, if the flimsiness becomes an issue, but for now, as I say, I've used them over the last week or so, I've not had uh, any issues with them whatsoever. So the next thing is that it's important to point out that although they look very similar, these aren't bone conduction headphones. Now with bone conduction headphones, you have bits that sit on the, the bones front and behind your ear, and they effectively just vibrate sound through your skull to make you hear it. But these are actually air conduction headphones, which is basically just a set of speakers that sit very close to uh, your ear, and direct the sound straight down into your ear canal. Now both bone conduction and air conduction headphones are what are called open ear headphones. So they're not like the traditional earbuds that go right down into the ear canal or like big noise cancelling headphones that go over the ear. And why is that important? Well as a cyclist, if you want to listen to music or a podcast when you're out on a ride, it's really important that no matter what you're listening to, you can still hear everything that's going on around you. Be that some traffic that's coming up behind you that you can't see or just another random cyclist shouting, on your right, coming up behind you. So because these headphones sit around your ear and not actually inside your ear canal, they're much safer to use when cycling to allow you to hear all that ambient noise around you. So so features of them and the first thing to point out is that they have a 17 hour battery life. Now that is absolutely fantastic because that's going to get you through a fair few rides or even uh, a couple of Audaxes if you're so inclined doing uh, long distance rides. So that's absolutely fantastic. Now I know my current in-ear earbuds uh, only last for about an hour on a full charge. So although I don't use them on the bike, they would be absolutely useless anyway because I'm off and out for three, four hours anyway. So having something with a 17 hour battery life absolutely fantastic. Now they also use a 5.3 Bluetooth connection. Now I had no idea what that meant so I had to go and look it up but effectively it means that it is a really strong connection with whatever device you're using them with which means you'll get less lag on the sound so if you do ever end up using them for watching a film or anything like that then you're not going to have any lip syncing issues so that's very good. Now these also have a water resistance rating of IPX4. Now again I didn't know the ins and outs of the water rating system so I had to go and look it up and IPX4 shows that it and I quote, protects from splashing water no matter the direction. So these should be pretty good uh, even if you take them out in the rain or if you get them covered in sweat at the end of a ride. Now I should probably say that two steps up from IPX4 is, unsurprisingly, 
IPX6, and IPX6 shows that it protects against powerful water jets. As such, these won't last if someone's hunting you down with a pressure washer, but to be honest, if someone's chasing you down the road with a car chair, you've probably got bigger problems than whether your headphones are going to continue working. Joking aside though, only IPX7 and IPX8 uh, protect from full immersion in water, so you can't use these while swimming unfortunately, but again for 26 quid or $30 you can't really expect them to. Right, so I reckon it's time for a fit and sound test. Now fit-wise, they actually feel really comfortable and they're not bulky at all. As I said earlier, they only weigh 28 grams. Now when you've got nothing on your head, they do just slot straight down over the top of your ears. That's absolutely fine. However, they can be a bit of a faff if you have a helmet on. So with a helmet on, you do have to mess around a little bit to get them over your ears. It's not a massive thing, but it just takes a couple of seconds extra to get on. Now, once they are on, again, they do feel really comfortable. There's no snagging or anything on the, on the straps of my helmet, certainly. And you can also wear uh, your favorite pair of shades over the top. And again, it doesn't really cause any issues. So they feel really secure. So any bumps or anything on the road, you don't really need to worry about them falling off mid-ride. I'm gonna take these off now because um, I've just brought them in from outside and they're steaming up, so I can't see a thing. Now, one thing I hadn't considered, because why would I, but if you are less... Now, one thing I have just noticed trying to take my helmet off is that these obviously are going over the, uh, the helmet straps at the back. Um, now, previously, I've always taken these off before taking my helmet off, so I've not come across this issue. So if you wear them over the top of your helmet straps, you will have to take them off first. But I just wonder what they're like if you wear them under the helmet straps, how comfortable they'll be. So I'm going to do that live test right now. Yeah, actually straight away, that doesn't feel anywhere near as comfortable at all. Because of the straps, I can feel these tabs pushing into the side of my head. And although it is probably even more secure and they're definitely not gonna fall off, it actually feels a little bit uncomfortable on the side of the ears. So it's up to you, personal preference, of course, but I've only worn them by putting the helmet on first and then putting them over the straps. And honestly, that just feels a little bit more comfortable. So again, it's entirely up to you, but uh, yeah, over the top of the straps, I think is more comfortable. So what I was just about to say is that um, one thing I hadn't considered when I first started using these, because why would I? But if you're less follically challenged than I am and you have long, luscious locks, like Mrs. Treadway, for instance, then you might have some issues putting these on with long hair. Now, again, having not had any hair to speak of for the last couple of decades, this isn't something I know much about and I don't know if this is usually an issue for when you're wearing other stuff that goes over the top of your head. But it's just something to consider when you are putting them on if you have long hair. Uh, Mrs. Treadway had a bit of a faff putting them on because she had to keep pushing her hair behind her ears and it was getting caught in front and it was a whole thing. So it's just something to be mindful of, but it's only a small thing in any case. Right, so it's time for the sound test. So let's get them paired first of all. So the first thing you need to do is get them connected, which you do by long pressing the middle button uh, on the controls and that's now connected. And now we can get some music playing courtesy of Amazon Music, who aren't sponsoring this video. All right, so we've got a bit of scissor playing at the moment and I'm on half volume and actually it sounds pretty good. It's not the loudest thing in the world, but in an empty soundproof studio like this, it actually sounds pretty good. However, because these are effectively just speakers on the outside of your head, I did wonder how much noise bleed you would get for them in case you are using them in a, a quiet office or some kind of setting like that. So I'm just gonna turn the volume up to full and see if the noise from here is gonna get picked up by the microphone on my chest. Okay, scratch that because I've just realized it's clear that I'm not a fully fledged YouTuber just yet because having listened back to that clip, you could quite clearly hear Scissors Kill Bill playing, which got me thinking, I'm probably gonna get a copyright strike for that. So instead, I've now looked up some copyright free music on uh, Amazon and we're gonna be playing that. So I don't start getting my wrist slapped by YouTube. So let's have a listen to this copyright free music. Okay, again, that's half volume. And again, it sounds pretty good in a quiet sound insulated studio. No problems whatsoever with that. Now I'm gonna turn it up to full volume. Now, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear this. I can barely hear myself talk while this is going on. So it is actually really, really loud. So yeah, as you can hear, that is pretty loud. So if you are gonna use these in a quiet office, then that might be a bit of an issue for you. However, using it on the bike, you're probably not gonna have them turned up full volume anyway, because as I said, I was actually struggling to hear myself talk. And that sort of defeats the object of having an open ear headphone if you're gonna whack them up to full volume and you're not gonna be able to hear anything around you anyway. But yeah, they're really good sound. And actually moving on to sound quality, the level of bass 
is actually quite surprising. Now, I've tried bone conduction headphones before. Now, I wouldn't say they're tinny, but you really struggle sometimes to get those warm, really deep, bassy tones. With these, I was really surprised with just how bassy they are. Although, just to quantify that comment, I don't want to get carried away here, these obviously aren't going to compare to a standard set of traditional in-ear earbuds or over-the-ear noise-cancelling headphones. However, these do a pretty good job of transferring those low-end sounds into your ear. And so there is actually a surprising amount of bass that you pick up with them, so that's pretty good. So one last thing I wanted to test before I take these out on the road is how good the built-in microphone quality is on these headphones. So this is me now talking through the microphone on these headphones. Now, given that up until this point, I've been using a fairly expensive wireless microphone connected to my uh, even more expensive mirrorless camera, there is gonna be, I assume, a great difference in the sound quality. But this is the sound that can be expected by anyone that you're on a phone call with while you're using these. So how does it sound? And it'll actually be really interesting to hear how this sounds when I'm outside on the bike with a good headwind. And speaking of which, I think it's time to get out on the bike. Let's go. Right, we are out, and what a glorious day! So I actually shot the first part of this video in the garage last night, knowing that was coming out on a bike ride this morning. And what a day it is! I've been very lucky this morning. So, onto the headphones. As I say, I filmed the first part of this video yesterday, and I forgot to turn the headphones off. I came down this morning, and I noticed that the power light was still on, on the controls. Oops. Luckily, because of that 17 hour battery life, it's still got plenty of charge in it. But that's one thing to be mindful of, that these things don't have an auto off setting. So if you put them down, go away for a couple of days, forgetting to turn them off, you're going to come back to them and they're dead. Seriously though, just look how beautiful green and lush this now looks. I love this time of year. Big beautiful sun and a lovely blue sky. Can't beat it. So the first thing I want to do, because ultimately I'll forget if I don't do it now, is the microphone test while we're out and about. So it is a little bit windy here at the moment. I'm not descending at 30 mile an hour, but we will try and find a hill a bit later on. But I'm now gonna change over to the microphone on the headphones and see how that sounds. And we're outside with a bit of wind blowing past us. How does it sound? I can hear wind rushing past my ears, so I can't imagine it's not going to affect the microphone at all. The microphones are actually right up in front of the headphones. So, they're going to get the full force of the wind coming by. So again, I'll be very surprised if they don't make a sound. However, anyone who's ever spoken to someone on the phone while they're riding a bike knows the Gale Force 9 sound that you get down the speaker. So I'm not going to be that surprised or disappointed if these sound fairly similar. These are ultimately marketed as a pair of headphones, not necessarily a microphone to do conference calling while you're out on a bike. And one thing I want to clarify from what I said yesterday in the studio, because I feel like it sounded a bit unfair, when I mentioned that these can't be used while swimming. Sound peats don't make any claims that they can be used while swimming, so that was probably a bit of an unfair judgment by me, but it's an important point to make anyway. Don't go swimming with them, because you will end up breaking them. So I just wanted to stop for a second because it's been a while since I've been able to get off the bike and enjoy some beautiful views. So um, yeah, here we are. The birds are tweeting, I've seen some rabbits running around in the fields. This is fantastic. So as I said yesterday, I've been using these for about a week now, uh, and being able to hear your music while hearing everything else around you is absolutely fantastic. As I said before, makes riding so much safer when you're listening to music. Um, however, it does take a little bit of getting used to uh, being able to hear music and everything around you. Again, it's only a small thing, um, but it can be a bit disorienting at first. So you need to be careful, take it easy. But once you get used to it, as I say, it's absolutely fantastic. Now I did try them going down a hill a bit earlier on, uh, and as expected, the wind noise rushing past my ears, even at full volume on the headphones, I couldn't hear a thing. But again, that's to be expected. When you've got a 30, 35 mile an hour wind rushing past your ears, you're not really gonna hear anything. But traveling along at 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, the sound is really clear. And actually I've been really impressed again with the sound quality uh, and the level of bass. So I must say while being out on the bike, you can't pick that bass up quite as well. However, it is still there and it's a nice thing to have. As I say, if you're using these in an office or something, then to have those low bassy sounds actually sounds quite nice. It gives it a much richer sound. One thing I should point out about the wind rushing past your ears at high speed though that's not unique to these sound peats that unfortunately is the same for all of these open ear design headphones because ultimately you have these two things on the side of your head that have been specifically evolved over thousands of years to pick up as much sound as possible traveling through the air so the fact that you're picking up a 30 mile an hour gust of air is not really surprising. So yeah, it would be unfair to say that sound peats only suffer with these problems. You're gonna have this with any open ear device. Right, let's get back on the bike, carry on with our ride. 
Now the last thing that Soundpiece wanted me to specifically mention about these things is that you can connect them to two devices at once. Now honestly I've racked my brains for quite a while wondering why you would need that feature and the only thing I could come up with is that if you've got it connected to your phone and maybe a sports watch at the same time so you could listen to music and get warnings about your distance and anything coming up. Other than that I can't really think of anything. If you can think of a reason why you might need two devices connected to these at the same point then um, feel free to put it in the comments. Right so conclusion who are these things for? Well ultimately anyone who wants to listen to music but also needs to listen to what's going on around them. Now the most obvious use case for that for me is cyclists and runners. Now I've not been able to test them while running because I am not a runner but Mrs Treadway is and I gave them to her to try for a little while. Right, so how do they feel? And they're good, they feel secure, ready for action. Don't feel like they're gonna fall out? No no not at all. All right let's see how you can run with them then. Okay cool. <laughs> Here we go! I'm really not a runner. She was really impressed with them though because her main gripe about earbud type earphones is how easily they fall out of her ears while she's on a run. So then she has to wear a headband but then on the run she gets too hot, she has to take it off, the earbuds keep falling out. Again it's a whole thing. She really liked how these effectively lock over your ear, stay put and you don't need to worry about them falling out. Now one final point I want to make is that these aren't for serious audiophiles which I've probably alluded to earlier in the video but if you really like your sound and you've already got yourself a pair of high-end over-the-ear headphones or even some earbud style headphones then these will leave you wanting but it's an unfair comparison to make because these are an entirely different style of headphone used for a completely different purpose and ultimately the technology just isn't there yet but physics also plays a massive part in it as I mentioned earlier these things are designed to pick up sound traveling on the air so with any of these open-ear headphones there's always going to be that trade-off of wind rushing past your head being heard while you're listening to your music but as a pair of headphones that allow you to listen to music safely while you're on the bike or while you're out running these are absolutely top notch so ultimately would I buy a pair of these headphones had I not already been sent a pair for free well honestly yes I've been looking for a set of open ear headphones for quite a while but was mainly put off by the price I mean the cheapest pair of Shox bone conduction headphones come in at 80 quid but to have these ones at 26 quid or 30 dollars I think it's an absolute steal quite honestly Right, so I've just picked the boy up from his triathlon training. So I thought I'd give him the headphones to see what he thought of them. Right, you want to wear these? Yeah! Where are your ears? Here. <laughs> so you can see what I mean about the hair getting in the ears, getting in the way. <laughs> right, let's give these a test. Let me put some music on for you. You hear it? Yeah. Is it good? So what's the verdict? Are they good? Yeah, definitely. I recommend them. Well, there you go. You can't get a much better recommendation than that, can you? <laughs> and you can still hear me, yes? Yeah, I can still hear you. Well, there's a first, because you can never usually hear me any other time. <laughs> right, we are back. Uh, and seeing as that was just an impromptu ride this morning, just to do the review for these headphones, what an absolutely glorious day it turned out to be. We're back, but I might, depending on what Mrs. Treadway says, I might just head back out to do, uh, to do a few more miles because it seems a shame to waste this great weather. So I'm not sure how many more of these review style videos I'm going to be doing because ultimately I don't know how many more companies are going to want to send me free stuff but I've made a vow that the only types of products that I will review are anything that other cyclists are genuinely going to find useful or interesting. I don't want this to become a spammy QVC style advertising channel. So don't worry I'm not going to start spamming you with the latest cosmetics and perfume. But on that note all of my content is cycling related so if that's the sort of thing you're into, product reviews, cycling vlogs, adventures out on the bike then I'd really really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Now that really really helps me just to let me know that uh, people are enjoying this kind of stuff that I put out. But real talk for a second it also gets me closer to that threshold of a thousand subscribers uh, which is when I can start making money from this channel and I know people find it a bit of a dirty thing to talk about but ultimately if I can start making money from this channel then it just means that I can start putting more content out better content more quality content for you guys to enjoy and yeah everyone wins basically so yeah if you could hit the subscribe button down the bottom if you haven't already it doesn't cost you guys anything 
but it really means a lot to me and it really tells me that you guys are enjoying these videos and that I should continue. But that's about it for this video. Uh, it's a big thanks to Soundpeats for sending these headphones to me for review and also a massive thanks to you for watching. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys give me, all of the comments, absolutely love it. It's really, really great to see all of your comments and everything and all the views and stuff. So thank you so much for all that support. So yeah, you'll get a big thumbs up from me. <laughs> but otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.